guys welcome back to the channel and like i promised that i would be taking different certification exams every month or two and give you the review of that so i sat for kubernetes uh, certified administrator exam on saturday and you can see the result i passed and i got the result yesterday night so i got the result exactly after 36 hours as the linux foundation says that you will receive the result in 36 hours so it came around i mean i sat on saturday afternoon around 2 and I got the result yesterday night or you can say today morning around four o'clock. So exactly, I mean, somewhere around 36 hours it took to actually give me the result and I passed. So here is my review. So let's just go. And here are the points which actually I wanted to review this paper on. So number one being how hard the paper was, the skills tested, language and length of the paper and experience of taking it from home. And please do stay till the end of the video because I'll give you a couple of uh, tips at the end of the video as well. So number one point, how hard the paper was. So what I did uh, at the beginning of the exam is for the first five to 10 minutes, I just went through the complete paper. So there were 17 questions in my paper. And if you don't know, the time has been redu reduced to two hours from the three hours paper, it has come down to two hours and there were 17 questions. Maybe for different people, it can vary but not much. It will be somewhere around 17, 18 questions, not more than that, right? So it was 17 questions for me and I went through all the questions uh, at the beginning of the exam. I took five minutes, seven minutes to do that. And I found that out of 17, there were around 10 to 11 questions, which I could complete in less than a minute or two, maybe in less than two minutes, right? So I did that and I was, I mean, I was completed almost like 11 questions uh, within 40 minutes of my exam. So I had a lot of time at my hand to complete the remaining five, six questions. So the hardness of paper is where, I mean, the remaining five, six questions lie. So those were the little hard questions for which you actually have to refer the documentation. I mean, if you have practiced enough, probably for 11, 12 questions, you would even have to look at the Kubernetes documentation. The paper would have been hard if they, I mean, remove this uh, referring to the Kubernetes documentation part. So if you, if they do that, then the paper actually becomes hard. But for me, I felt that the paper was okay, not very hard, not very easy. There were some questions which were confusing, but still, I mean, you can get through it if you have documentation at hand, right? So I would say that it was uh, like you, like what I should say, neutral. The paper was neutral. So it was not very hard, not very easy. Coming to the second point, skills tested. So this paper is not only the test of your Kubernetes skills, but also the test of your Linux system administration skill because the system you are given are Linux systems. So people with Windows background actually tend to struggle here a bit. I mean, they if they are not familiar with uh, Linux system administration skills because you would be tested on your Vim skills, your basic Linux system administration skills, the way you write commands and things like that. So skills, other skills would also be tested here. It's not just your Kubernetes uh, knowledge. Coming to language and length. So I found the language of the paper was pretty straightforward. So there are, there were no long questions like that would take you around three to four minutes just to read. There were simple questions, maybe a couple of lines, three lines, four lines, not more than that. And the language was very precise, very easy to understand. It's just that there were a couple of questions in my case, maybe it could be an isolated case that the language was confusing and I was not able to understand the question. Maybe it can be me who was not able to understand the question. And maybe that's the reason I was not able to score the 100% which I actually aimed for this in this paper. But I mean, maybe that that's where I went uh, wrong. I think I did those questions uh, completely wrong can be so they don't give you a detailed uh, result they just give you the percentage which you got right length of the paper i found to be pretty good because the three hours paper came up with around 24 to 25 questions and with one hour less you get around 17 to 18 questions and you can easily complete uh, 10 to 11 questions in less than 40 minutes so i felt that length of the paper is perfectly fine uh, there's no shortage of time it won't be like you fell short of time so that that's perfectly fine for me experience of taking it from home so this was this my second exam which i was taking from home the last exam i took was aws network speciality certification and the experience was pretty similar uh, you would actually have to show around your room your desk to the online proctor who's there uh, the proctor would guide you through the steps to you that you need to do before you begin the exam in the middle of the exam, Proctor would actually ask you to raise your hands a couple of times. And that's, I think, the Linux Foundation requirement. 
it's nothing that they check that you're cheating or something like that so it's just the linux foundation requirement which actually lets them so they would ask you uh, around maybe a couple of times so my proctor asked me two times to raise the hands and show it in the uh, in the camera apart from that i mean you wouldn't even notice that uh, the proctor is there once once you begin the paper so yeah so overall i would say that this exam for me was three out of five in in totality i mean five i would say would be very difficult and one i would say would be very easy but i found this to be three out of five not not very difficult not very easy but it was okay i mean when i gave the network speciality exam i would say that that was 3.5 for me because that was actually tough paper even though it was a mcq and this was a, a hands-on exam still so cka for me is a three out of five uh, paper all right so now since we are at the end of the video i would give you a couple of tips so let's go to the tips and here they are so enable bash completion uh, at the beginning of the exam so bash completion is not enabled by default you would actually have to enable it and if you don't know the command just put put a comment down and i will give you the command uh, otherwise i mean sometimes it can be a possibility that the bash completion package is not installed so you would actually have to install that you can do a simple Google search or just put in a comment and I'll share it with you. Coming to the second tip is that don't worry about the aliases. I mean, many people you would say those people, people who are preparing for CKA would see that aliases are very important. But frankly speaking with me, I didn't create any alias. I mean, because the problem with me is, I mean, it can be just me because if I create an alias for kubectl, say suppose K, uh, in the hurry or in the basically in rush i would actually type the kubectl command pretty quickly right so i would actually forget to use aliases i mean and if you are the same kind of person please don't waste your time in creating aliases because i mean firstly the paper is not that tough that you would need those aliases uh, a lot of time there'll be i mean enough time at your hand so you can do that i mean type those commands anytime you want any number of time so there's no point creating aliases right i mean it's just my opinion Probably there will be people who would uh, not agree with that, but I didn't see the need of creating aliases. The third and very important tip is that you should know, I mean, you should use imperative command as often as possible. So don't try to do everything using YAML manifest file because that would take a lot of your time. Try to complete most of the task, especially the easy ones using the imperative kubectl command. So suppose if you have to create a deployment, just do a kubectl create deployment instead of creating a deployment yaml file right so that would actually save you a bunch of time over there one tip which is not there and which i have actually talked about in the beginning of the video is that you should go through the complete question paper in first 5 to 10 minutes just go through that and that will actually help you to understand the question which can complete in maybe less than 2 minutes or 3 minutes so you can instead of going one question after the other you can actually jump questions and complete the ones which you can do like in less than two minutes, right? So, and then the remaining questions, the remaining five, six questions, you can complete in the time which you have at hand, which would be pretty enough. I mean, more than an hour. So, yeah, so those were my tips. That was my review, a three out of five exam. It tests you, your skills, your Kubernetes knowledge, pretty good. Uh, although the Kubernetes knowledge is not tested very core it's not i mean it's not very deep but still for a ck i think it's enough uh, i mean it's it's not the end of the world for you here you actually have to learn a lot of things after this exam but this exam actually gives you a head start what, what you would say so yeah this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching